Okay, in this video, we're gonna be working on a KitchenAid dishwasher. Uh, let me turn some lights on. So this particular dishwasher is a couple years old um, and it is erratically not washing dishes. So what I mean by that is water will circulate through the unit, uh, but no water will get onto the dishes. It just pumps the same water around. And typically that's a, a failed wash motor and it's pretty common failure in these things. Uh, this particular model is a KDDTE. I'm sorry, KDTE 104E S is in SAM, S is in SAM 2. So the parts you're going to need for this uh, are pretty straightforward. Pardon the mess. This is the wash motor assembly. They do sell the wash motor by itself. Uh, but you'll see that a lot of repair guys just replace this whole assembly. It's about a hundred bucks on Amazon Unfortunately, it doesn't last that long. This is uh, not the first time this has been replaced in this dishwasher This is just a part that goes bad in these every every year or two. I don't know why just a bad design while we're in there uh, We're also gonna be replacing the heating element because there's a code for a bad heating element in the computer Kind of sad they don't make stuff like they used to the the days of appliances lasting 20 and 30 years or seem to be long gone now i watched the repair guy do this whole repair from underneath the dishwasher didn't take it out didn't do anything so i'm going to try the same thing so the first step is to take this kick panel off as you can see it's already off just two little uh Plastic screws that come off with a flat bladed screwdriver. I'm gonna have to take this off or this out. Set this aside over here. And this spinny thing gonna have to come off. And that just, this nut little, this nut just spins right off and it lifts straight out. This is also gonna have to get disconnected too. I don't remember how that was done, so we'll, we'll figure it out. Let me get some tools. All right, so this is the assembly we're gonna be replacing. Uh, we're gonna have to wanna kill power to the dishwasher. We're gonna have to disconnect this drain line and probably this water supply line too. It looks like it's gonna be in the way. So we're gonna shut the water off and kill the power. And in this dishwasher, when I plumbed it, I plumbed a separate shutoff valve to make that process easy. We'll just shut that off and yank the plug. I'm gonna go get a little basin to drain that water in. All right, so I just loosened this nut here. I got a towel standing by to catch any drips. Again, the water is shut off. You do not want to do this with the water on. Big mess. So there's not much water in there. I'll just dump this out. You guys probably noticed I have a stainless steel line here. Highly recommend using stainless steel hoses for all your plumbing fittings in the kitchen. Sink supply hoses, dishwasher supply hoses, everything. It just makes life a lot easier. If something were to ever go wrong, or hopefully nothing will ever go wrong with those. They still tell you you should replace them every four or five years or so, but realistically they pretty much last forever. Don't quote me on that though. So we'll take this clamp off. Disconnecting the drain line now with all the nasty water. Whoops, in here. Whoops. And I knocked the camera over and made a mess at the same time, but that's why we have towels. It came off a little faster than I was expecting. Such is life though, right? Get some of that nasty water. Let's get this hose out of the way. You don't need to see me clean up my mess. All right, the next step after you clean up the mess is to turn these locking pads so that they're not locked. I'll show you that on the new one. 
when the motor is installed, these will be in the locked position, like so. That retains the motor from coming up into the unit, up into the, the basin. So you got to push all these into that position, like that. Just like so. And that should loosen up the motor, but we still have to disconnect that tube in there. So we'll do that now. Okay, so let's take filter assembly out that just twists and comes right out. Pretty easy. And this screen should pop right out too once you take the filter assembly out. And now we gotta get this thing out here. Let's see, how is that retained? Looks like there's clips on either side. Let's see if we can pop those away. Man, it stinks in here. Been sitting for too long. Now. There are little stainless steel clips that hold that top pipe in there. They're disconnected now and there's two more on that back unit back there on either side. I think it's two or maybe it's four. Let's see. And of course they're really challenging to do with one hand so I'm going to go back there and do it with two. Okay once you get those clips taken off that whole assembly is loose. So now we can disconnect those clips down there and it should pop right out. Let's give that a shot. So far, just a total of four clips. There we go. It just pops right out like that. And now that's loose. And this is even looser. It's actually not that bad of a repair. All right, so I'm gonna disconnect the wiring down below. I recommend you take a picture just to make sure you put everything back where it went. In fact, this will be my picture. So you can see some wiring that's hooked up in those little bundles there so we can unhook all that stuff. All right, so I got one bundle unhooked there. We have a wire harness on this thingy here, I think is the wash pump, I'm not sorry, the wash pump, the, the drain. Let's see, how does that come out? Let's look at the new one. Oh wait, no, forget that. We're reusing that piece, so we gotta figure out how to disconnect it. The new one doesn't come with that. Maybe we can disconnect it from above if we pull this thing out. I don't think there's much else that's holding it. Let's see. It'd be a lot easier if we just lift this up here and disconnect it up here. Don't know if we're gonna be that lucky though. All right, I discovered it's almost impossible, if not impossible to remove that whole that whole assembly with the drain pump attached it just twists and pulls out it's pretty easy to remove there's no fasteners to hold it in place once that pops out it should no longer rub against the housing it was rubbing right about there so let's see if that did it getting closer All you pros are laughing at me right now. Let's see what's holding us in now. There we go. It's out. And still stinky. So what's holding us in? We got this assembly here. Gotta hook that wiring. Just gotta undo some wiring there. And now is the great time to pop out the heating element because you can see the two leads are right behind this assembly, right there and right there. 
and they're almost impossible to reach with this thing installed. And there's two nuts that hold it in from the bottom, so now is the great time to do it. So on this side, I unhooked this thing from here. I think that's called the turbidity sensor. Just untwists. I'm gonna unhook that wiring harness from the back. Let's see if we can yank this forward a little bit more. Beautiful. So now this has to unhook here. I think we have another wire wiring harness on the diverter. So let's see, how does this come out? It might just unhook. So there's kind of strange wiring harnesses. It's probably a clip that holds them on. Oh. Let's try this side. So let's do that. Get us some more room. Stinky dishwasher. Okay, so it looks like this has to pull. There we go. So this uh, old doohickey came out like that. Probably only goes in one way. I'm guessing there's something similar over here. So you pull that, that piece out there. These red wires go back in here. Somehow. Yeah, same deal. It just pulls away and they pull out. There we go. All right, so the old unit is free. <sighs> Wasn't horrible. Wouldn't have been as bad if it didn't stink so much. Let's set this aside and dry things off. All right, dry things off, clean things up a little bit. I ran a rag around that rim right there because there's a lot of gook there. I'm gonna go find what size socket this is. Um, this will make taking the old heating element off and putting the new one on a bit easier. Okay, three quarter inch is the correct size. Let's see if we can actually get a socket on there though with the wiring there. Might have to use the good old wrench. So first we're gonna disconnect the wiring. Now we should just be able to get a socket on there. Let's see how well it's going to work. Let's see if we're going to get lucky. It does appear that we might. so you don't want to tighten these too much. Taking these out though. Kind of silly, a lot of dishwashers you just replace these things from above, but thank you KitchenAid slash Whirlpool. So that feels like it's finger tight. That's out, that's out. Now I did own this element and the element tested okay. So I'm a little hesitant to replace parts without knowing what's wrong, but I'm wondering if maybe there's like an intermittent fault in it where it's opens up when it gets hot or something along those lines. So it'll just pop right out like that. Uh, and this should spring forward here. Right there. Let's set that aside. So here's the old element. Don't see any obvious problems with it, but again, not all problems are obvious. It's a little rusty. I'll mess around with that later. Whew. Let's put the new element in. It really smells like barf. I lubricated these uh, uh, the seals there with a little bit of dish soap just to make things slide together a little bit easier. Make sure we don't sever any important parts. So let's get those in there, like so. Like that. Like that. Let's make sure this snaps in there. Appears we have 
have to work with like that. Okay, so I got things just kind of sitting there. Now pop that in, put the new nuts on. Again, three quarter inch. Snug them down with the wrench. If I could find my ratchet. Oh, where'd I put it? You guys can probably see it on the camera. Probably put it somewhere on a flat surface. Oh, yep, it's right down there. All right, so righty tidy, lefty loosey, right? So we'll just snug this down. That should do it. Same thing on this side. Just want to snug it down until heating elements not wobbling around anymore and that seal tightens up a bit. So you can see that's not going anywhere. Hook your wiring back up. One. And two. There we go. Now we can start putting things back together. I'm gonna clean it off one more time. I see some spots I missed. Okay, I'm gonna lubricate some of the seals in here with some dish soap just to make sure things go back together smoothly when I'm any leaks. Start hooking up some of the wiring now. Let's see, so we got that. This turbidity sensor, or at least that's what I think it is. It goes in here. It's a little cruddy, but let's lubricate that a little bit. Make sure that seals. I'm just dipping a finger in some dish soap and just coating these O-rings here. Like that. That one over there like that. And this went on like so. Okay. We got some other wires that are dangling down here. Fell down. And these are the tight ones. Let's see. Not the easiest task. So now we just kind of got it loosely sitting there. I'll close this door and see what it looks like down here. Okay. We gotta put this drain back in.
Oh, gotta cut that with dish soap, right? Gotta obey my own rules. There's a gasket on there. Right there. So instead of coating that gasket there, I'm just gonna, actually, maybe I will. Let's see if we can do this. Where's Mike Rowe when you need him? This looks like a dirty job. A little bit more soap, it's kind of stiff. I don't remember which way I turned it too. <sighs> Looks like it goes in about like that. And just rotates like that. All right, so what are we hung up on now? Let's check the inside. All right, got it in. Yay. Now we just gotta flip those clips. I'm videoing, dear. Unless you wanna, you don't, you don't wanna be on the camera? No, you scared? No, I just. My wife is scared of the camera. All right, so one by one, you just gotta rotate those three clips back the way they were. All right, got all three tabs turned. That's seated in there. I hooked up part of this tube down here. I just snapped it in that groove. Now we gotta snap it back in, back here and also at the top. Now it's just a matter of getting the wires back in their looms, hooking up the drain line, which is a simple matter of loosening this clip, like so. And getting it back into position. Not like that. Also have to obviously reattach the water supply. And these are plastic now, so you gotta be real careful you don't break these. Hand tight never seems to do it, so I usually do hand tight plus a little bit with a wrench. Haven't broken one yet, but of course I'm on camera now, so I probably will. Let's give that a shot. So we'll turn the water on and we'll check the leaks. Water's on. No leaks yet. That's a good sign. Let's get our wires back into our looms. We missed one over here. On that side. Probably is super critical, but I think the wire is buzzing against something. And that might do it. Turn the power back on and see what happens, right? Oh wait, we still gotta install the filter assembly and the spinning thing on the inside. Probably a name for that. I'm gonna wash all these things off first before I reinstall, so I don't reinstall dirty parts. All right, so I turned the power back on. I got the uh, spinny thing hooked up and I got the uh, filter assembly. So now let's just do a cycle with uh, just rinse, see if it works. I'm not going to put this 
cover on the bottom until I know it's working okay. Okay, we're filling with water. That's a good sign. You could probably hear it. Don't see any leaks. Let's just dry things off a little bit better. Let's see some water. Okay, here's the wash motor. Good sign. Take a look inside and make sure things are working okay. And it does appear that it's working okay. It's spraying everywhere. So I think we'll call that repair done. Uh, now all you gotta do is just, I would run it through a couple cycles just to make sure there are no leaks. Put, put the bottom piece on and hopefully it lasts a while. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if I helped you.